Right, Teleode champs, you should not be buying this Mac Studio unless. I guess we'll get to the unless first. And it's nothing to do with this machine not being awesome, because it really is epic. But I think even if you have your heart set on this, and you want to buy one of these Mac Studios, if you listen to this video in its entirety, I guarantee you'll have some food for thought, and it will even fortify your lust for this machine, or it will have you contemplating some better options. So I've been testing this machine over the last few days, gaming, benchmarks, you know, creative applications, 3D stuff, video editing, all that sort of stuff that these things are made for. And i got to say, this thing is a marvel of engineering. I wouldn't say it's the best design Apple product out there. They've definitely made better looking products. I mean, it just looks like a bigger Mac Mini, but it is a technical marvel. A real testament to Apple's engineering prowess, especially in efficiency. Now, efficiency doesn't matter that much for desktops, but still, you got to tip your hat to Apple. I mean, it was using one-fifth of the power of a PC. Yeah, when I was doing my gaming test, a 3090 PC was using over 500 watts. This was only using like 130 watts. But there was actually a guy in the comments that said, a bicycle may be efficient, but can it tow a boat? Well, this can probably tow a boat, but will it tow a boat as good as other stuff? Well, we will discuss that. Now, the performance of this studio is truly impressive. And if you're someone that needs massive amounts of video memory, nothing can touch this, right? So if you're into machine learning, scientific data, folding, maybe 3D stuff, where you can use that video memory, I will say it's probably a fraction of 1% of people that would probably do that, but you know who you are this is for you. And there's nothing in the PC land that can touch it. The amount of bandwidth you can give to the CPU, unheard of. And maybe there are some scientific applications that can really make use of that. And you really do need multi-core performance because a single core is going to be the same as the M1 Pro or Max. Well, again, if that's you, this machine's for you. I'm yet to see in the real world for the stuff that most of us use, where the extra bandwidth for the CPU really does make that much of a difference. This studio has six discrete Thunderbolts, and I checked, they're all discrete. Just wow. And aesthetically, it does make mini ITX PCs, which are pretty small. It makes them look like big chungus. And I think also, if you just want the best, the fastest Mac, and you will only use Macs, this is for you. But I actually had someone in the comments go, for a spec'd up M1 Ultra Mac Studio, I can get a MacBook Pro and a PC, which made me ponder here. I'm only speaking for myself, and this is my opinion, which is neither right or wrong, but um, I'm definitely not giving up my MacBook Pro and PC to get one of these studios. So I'll just tell you for my workflow, which I do mostly video editing, photography, and stuff like that, web surfing, view content, etc. The M1 Ultra Mac Studio virtually makes no difference to what I do. Most of the heavy lifting for the stuff I do is done by the encoders. I could not notice any difference between the timeline using Final Cut or Premiere Pro, using Photoshop and all the other stuff I do. I could notice no difference between the MacBook Pro and this M1 Ultra Mac Studio. For me, the only difference was a 5 minute render on the Mac Studio versus a 7 minute render on the MacBook Pro. And yes, I do have the 48 core version of the M1 Ultra. It would be a bit faster if you had the 64 core version of the M1 Ultra. But you know what? Another minute faster, so we're talking 7 minutes versus 4 minutes render. It ain't going to make that much difference to my world. And when I look at the Mac Studio, the pricing of it, when you get the M1 Max version of the Mac Studio, and then you add a high quality display to it, the price between the Studio and the MacBook Pro 16 or 14, whatever, if you get the M1 Max version of those laptops, is very comparable because you need a HDR display, don't you? I think the studio display is good because of its size, but it doesn't compare to a mini LED HDR display on the MacBook Pro. So for me, it's a no-brainer, just get the MacBook Pro, unless you've already got a monitor and you're just wedded to having like a desktop rather than a laptop. So that means for me, you have gotta get the M1 Ultra version of the Mac Studio. So the price difference is insane. So here's the deal, we're talking about desktops here, and these are professional desktops. You even get the black Apple sticker, which means it's proper Pro. So we should be comparing it to workstation professional desktops. And if you're going to do that and you're going to get the M1 Ultra, you're going to want the best SSD speeds, right? Did you know if you have the 1 or 2 terabyte version of the Mac Studio, you're not getting full SSD speeds? You need to have the 4 terabyte version to get the advertised speeds from Apple of 7,000 megabytes per second, you know, writes. The 1 and 2 terabyte are in the 5,000s area, not the 7,000 that Apple advertise. So you're going to want that, right? You're going to want the 64 core GPU as well. I mean, you're spending all this money, you might as well. And we're talking about a desktop. Top, I have built many production machines for people. 128 is just sort of standard, right? Minimum 64, but most of the machines I make, it's just like 
get 128 gigs RAM. I mean, why wouldn't you? It's a desktop. And in that case, once you add 128 gigabytes to this machine, we're talking the best part of $7,000. So for the best part of $7,000 US, you can definitely get a Beast PC and a MacBook Pro 16. And you might be saying, well, the M1 Ultra's got the multi-core and double the amount of hardware encoder as well. I've shown you, you know, five minutes versus seven minutes. Like, who cares? That's for me. The multi-core, if you're buying a PC, you're going to have faster multi-core. You're going to have faster single core. Well, of course, if you're only just going to buy a Mac and you can only have Macs, it's not going to make a difference. You're not going to buy a PC, but you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the MacBook Pro 14 or 16 and a Beast PC, faster single core, faster multi-core. And it does have hardware encoders, depending on what CPU you have, AVX512, you have NVENC, you got CUDA instead of metal. CUDA is like industry standard for, you know, visual effects, 3D and stuff like that. Quick sync. And as I said, NVENC, which all the streamers use NVENC encoders, which is on the NVIDIA cards. And for gaming, there's no comparison, right? If you look at all the videos that get the most views on these MacBook Pro 16s and Mac Studios, it's gaming. People want a game. These Macs would be awesome for gaming but they have no gaming support and using crossover and you know parallels put it this way it's a really bad experience and for me personally i would rather put out a campfire with my face than actually use one of these macs as a primary gaming machine using crossover or parallels like <laughs> that is a bad experience and if you're going to talk about the m1 ultra versus the you know the best pc here's the truth you have to work out what's better, right? There are some things that the M1 Ultra will smash the PC in, especially some of the niche things like being able to have 128 gigabytes of RAM, memory bandwidth, the encoders, but again, remember, PC have more diverse encoders, as I mentioned before, but there will be things that the M1 Ultra will smash the PC, but that works the other way around too. There are things that a good PC will absolutely crush the Ultra. You need to work out what's better for you, but for me, best of both worlds have a macbook pro 16 or 14 whatever and a beast pc that will fit into seven thousand dollars no problem and again you'll be going well what about my multi-core etc see we'll have faster single core faster multi-core i don't see which way you're losing now choosing just one computer a pc over an m1 ultra you're just gonna have to look up what's faster for you but given that budget of seven thousand which i think you need to really get the most out of this ultra mac studio be by be curious swing both ways get a mac and a pc that's the way i would go let me know the way you would go i'll catch you in the next one telly ho